Um, you look like you're in a better mood than you were yesterday. Just, just how exciting is this? I know you've been to the NSA tournament before, but these players haven't. Just what, what's it like? No, I think everybody's really excited. I mean, it's, it's, it's so interesting. I, you know, on the bus ride today, I was thinking about, uh, got to play in two NCAA tournaments, uh, was a part of two as an assistant coach in the three years that I was an assistant. This is now the fourth straight year as a head coach that I've been in it. So I've been a part of a lot of these and every single one of them feels the same way when you see your name up there. Um, and then, and then every game's a challenge. I mean, you t talk about Colgate at 14 and one and, and they got a great backcourt. Uh, number one, Jordan Burns is, is a guy that obviously runs the show for them and, and double zero uh, cutting him and, and 13 Ferguson are two guys that we obviously are concerned with. And, you know, this team Colgate can really, really score the basketball. They're second uh, in the nation at scoring at, at 86.4 points a game. And they have an incredible assist to turnover ratio, second in the nation and eighth in assists. So they do a great job of moving the basketball from side to side at 17.6 assists a game. And, and then their field goal percentage, they take great shots. They're 10th in the country in field goal percentage at 49.7%. Uh, and if you want to know how I know all this so soon, Coach Ruda had this thing nailed on who we were going to play. So we had a five-hour bus ride where Coach Ruda was just hammering home Colgate. Can they please shut up over there? Hey, can you guys hold it down? Scotty. Hey, Coach, you, you, you got a lot of guys on your roster who are going to be playing in their first NCAA tournament, including Desi and, and Justin, and obviously your freshman. And just just how, how pumped are you for, for those guys to get this chance? I mean, I told them before, you know, the show came on, number one, what an honor it was uh, to know that we were playing in this tournament. And you can never, ever, ever, as a player, as a coach, as an administrator, as a booster, as a former player, as an alumni or a fan, you can never take for granted how hard it is to get into this tournament. It's really hard. Um, and so I don't take it for granted. And then to earn the seed that we earned, you know, you play all year to make the tournament and then you play to try to get the best seed that you possibly can. And now we know from this moment on, anything's possible. That's why it's March Madness and, and uh, crazy things happen. We've got to do the best of our ability to start preparing. It'll start with the Zoom tonight with our team when they're in isolation. Um, we will, we've already got a, a scouting report planned. We'll, we'll continue to add uh, you know, depth to the scouting report as we become more and more familiar with Colgate, a really well coached team. Um, we got to come up with some drills to defend the three. We got to keep their guards in front of us. Can't let them get to the hole. Uh, again, we got to contain, you know, Burns and Cunningham. And they're an uh, analytics team. They, they, they make threes, they make layups. Um, so we look forward to, to, to the prep over the next few days. Curtis. Hey, Coach, congratulations. And you mentioned Ruta as the, the bracketologist a minute ago. I wanted to ask you about Ruta, the scheduler. Uh, you, you guys, you know, caught a little bit of flag from some people about the non-conference strength of schedule early in the season. But the good, as you the good, not to interrupt, Curtis, but the good thing is the people that had negative thoughts on the non-conference schedule, I know exactly who they are. <laughs> and obviously they did not do their homework at all. Well, that answers my first question, if it's validating to see some of those teams make the NCAA tournament. And then, as it turns out, you guys played well enough to, to get a high seed and, and you draw one of those, you know, tough mid-major opponents. So does it become even more beneficial now, that early non-conference schedule? Well, I think that, you know, the bottom line is when your staff is sitting uh, and you got a spreadsheet that's got, you know, 100 teams, what you're trying to do uh, is you're trying to find teams that can win their conference tournament and look there's you know when you're at a place like Nevada you that's the way to get an at-large bid and you know I think that the natural thing at a power five is well let's just schedule other power five and get two or three of those games but there's a strategy to this to to think that we had nine non-conference games four of those teams are in this tournament 
And then you add in the fact that, yes, we wanted to play some in-state schools, which, which we were able to, um, you know, that, and then you think that we were supposed to play Oklahoma and Tulsa. We had a really good non-conference schedule. And, and again, um, I, I thought our, our staff, the, the, the crew that does all that, really, really spent a lot of time and did a great job on it. Jason? But you talk about your schedule. They had to really piece their schedule together, it looks like, this year to, to get to those 15 games they played. Uh, how do you scout those th this team, knowing what you know about their offense, with them playing, you know, multiple games against the same team over and over again? Yeah, I mean, I think all we can do is watch as much tape as possible. Um, you know, uh, I'm fortunate that Coach Richardson brought a, a bike here that I can put in my room and just, you know, pedal away. Um, I'm sure I'll share that with you guys from my room tomorrow morning when I'm pedaling and watching some game tape because I can't leave the room. So what better way than to burn calories and watch Colgate? Kyle. Hey, Coach, this program hasn't made a Sweet 16 run in a quarter century. Uh, you, you've made one before. You've led a team there. What does it take to win a couple games in this tournament? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to just say one thing. We got, we got to figure out a way to beat Colgate. And to win a game in this tournament is so hard. Every single possession matters. Um, and our only if we have any other folk, I don't even know who else is in the bracket with us. I just know we play Colgate. And that's really the only thing that any of us, meaning our internal group, you know, everybody else can, can, can have fun with the bracket. I'm sure my daughter will be filling one out. My wife will fill one out. My son in San Diego, who's on his way to Indianapolis, will be filling one out. But I'm, I'm not going to. I'm going to worry about how do we beat a team that can really, really score the basketball uh, and is a dangerous offensive team and a team that switches up its defenses a lot. How are we going to win the game. I don't even know what day we play. And, um, you know, I think Desi's smile kind of said it all. Half your roster is from this state, Coach. Uh, do you have a sense kind of what it means to those kids to grow up here and watch this team, to see this team, you know, achieve something they haven't done since the 90s? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, again, I think for, for you know, anybody that grew up watching the Razorbacks and for them to be in, I think it's it holds a special place in their heart and, um, they're, they're so young, like, they're going to look back at this for the rest of their life. Um, I mean, I can picture every moment, the, you know, my freshman year when we went to a tournament and played Princeton in the Palestra. Um, to this day, I'm, I mean, I'm 57 years old, and I, I can tell you the meals we had. Um, I still had a text thread with eight of the guys that were on that team with me. Um, this is going to be really, really special for all these guys. Because again, you mentioned not many of them on this roster have been to a tournament and, and um, it's hard to get into. Bob, you want to wrap us up with Mus? Yeah, Eric, Eric, you know, Jalen Tate should have gotten to play in this tournament a couple of times already, but he didn't get to because of injuries and then last year's cancellation. How happy are you for him? I know he's had some foul issues the last few games, but just, uh, what, what's he brought to the team this year? How, how, what's he done for you? Yeah, I think Jalen's been awesome defensively. He gets the toughest assignment every night. He's had some scoring nights where he's kind of carried us if we've, if we've sputtered offensively. But I think his biggest thing is just being a leader in the huddles, being a leader at halftime, being a leader pregame. Um, you know, the guys look up to him because of his, uh, you know, the, the, the winning mentality that he has. And he's a big-time culture guy for us. And he, he and Justin are two guys that I think certainly all of us, including the coaching staff, looks for from a stability standpoint, both in game and then outside the lines as well. well when Justin got hurt, I mean, you thinking like, man, this is really going to screw screw the season up. And um, you know, it did did for a little while, but he came back and he's been playing great. Now he gets to go back. Now he's back in. I guess you guys are in Indiana now. Now he gets to play back in uh, sort of his adopted home state, I guess. What, what, what do you think about that? What do you think about the way he dealt with that injury and came back early and all that stuff? Yeah, I mean, words don't describe the respect that we have. Obviously, he came back against Alabama, and he was hobbling and was not fully healthy, but he did it for the betterment of the team. Um, I think that, you know, Justin's ecstatic with the way that this year has gone for him. He took a leap of faith to come here because he was 
so sought after by so many different programs across the country. And, and uh, his, his mom, uh, Lucy, is really happy. And, and Edward, his dad, is really happy with the way uh, the whole season's gone. And, and we're happy for him. I mean, for him to be able to come back and play in the state of Indiana and NCAA tournament's a really neat story. And then Anthony Rude, he really told you, hey, I think, we're, I think you know, the game's going to be against uh, Colgate, or did he give you a couple options, or he, did he just? Rude gave me three options. Well, what were the other two? I'd rather not say. Okay. But, I mean, were you confident he knew what he was talking about? Oh, yeah. I've been studying this stuff. I got all these notes right here. I have had notes upon notes sitting on the, on the bus. <laughs> I don't know if you can read that, Bob, but we got them right there's that depth chart. Uh, I can read a little bit. My eyes are, you know, you can probably. I, I, might, I might text you who the, who the other. And actually, Hunter, uh, you're a check. He also set his prediction a few hours ago. I got to go back and review and see if Hunter was right. If he is, Mike K. Wood will hit you guys with uh, Hunter's prediction if he was right. Okay, sounds good, Eric. Thank you. See you guys. Thanks, Mus. Hey, hey Kyler, they ain't a